Texas quadriplegic Peter Dupree continues to cement his name as one of the country's best sports stars. Dupree secured a fifth title with victory at the UCI Paracycling World Championships in the H1 category in Portugal earlier this month. Dupree is back in the country and he joins us now via Zoom to have a bit of a chat. Now, Peter, um, good morning to you. Thank you so much for making the time. Firstly, congratulations to you on that fifth title. Before heading to uh, Portugal, you had told us that it was more about going through the motions of the competition than winning. And of course, you went ahead and you won. I'm sure you were extremely ecstatic about that win. If you could put for us just into, word, into words um, how that moment felt for you. Yeah, yes, good morning, um, guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that's what made it so special. Uh, you know, the reason why it was going through the motions is firstly because um, because of COVID, we haven't really raced internationally for a year and a half. Um, but also 10 months ago, I had an incredibly severe shoulder injury, um, uh, you know, which sort of made me not train properly for six months with the plate that was in my shoulder. Um, so that's why, you know, I wasn't sure... The idea was not to peak, uh, which is still not the idea, but then to come out and have such special racing. Um, yeah, you know, I've had some special world championship wins in my life. Um, one year on Home in 2017, but that one was the best race of my life, you know. So um, all good signs for Tokyo, but just a very special moment. It was incredibly special that I could have my, my best teammate, my wife, um, and my four-year-old son there to uh, enjoy it with me. Peter, talk me about Tokyo. I'm sure that um, you are definitely thinking about Tokyo. How much work goes into managing, you know, two events um, when one of them is, of course, um, a Paralympic um, Games that you have there with everything that's happened also in the past year? Yeah, look, I mean, that's the thing, you know. The end goal is Paralympics. Um, so, you know, it's, obviously you focus on peaking at that time. But, you know, obviously the world champs and, and other events is... Um, Always racing is the best training um, going into such a big event. Um, but obviously, you know, my coach and myself obviously just talk about how to approach it. We do the right training. So, uh, you know, it's, it's not difficult to manage them. It's just you need to approach them in the right way. Um, and like I said, you know, the training that was done was not planned to peak um, at World Champs. But, you know, it's the same for everyone else. Um, so, obviously, Everyone else is on the same level, and then to come out on top, uh, you know, it, it's a special, special race, special day. Peter, I'm sure you will agree, you know, with sport, it's not just the physical planning that you have to go through. Um, there is the mental um, aspect to that as well. So I'm sure Portugal must have been a bit of a mental boost for you ahead of Tokyo. <laughs> yes. Um, sorry, my son just walked in. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. <laughs> the joys of yeah, life. <laughs> No, it, look, it's definitely, I think the biggest part of it was the mental battle with my shoulder injury over the last 10 months. Um, so, you know, for me, you know, obviously I've overcome over the years um, quite a couple of other big obstacles. Um, so I think all of that helps you um, to know how to deal with these things. Um, but it definitely was a big mental challenge. And obviously the support from your family and friends um, and even the country, to be honest, you know, it was incredible support from, from South Africa. Um, it really does, does help a lot for you to get over those challenges and, and get on the line, you know, at the best that you can be. So how are you dealing with the uncertainty around the summer games, Peter? Let's just say again, the uncertainty around? How are you dealing with the uncertainty around the summer games? Yeah, look, <laughs> it, it was tough, uh, you know, especially last year. But to be really honest, right now, um, you know, I feel very positive about it. And the thing is, you can't, you can only control what you can control. And that's what you should focus on. Um, and all the rest, you know, happens as it happens. So in my mind, I'm training and I'm focusing as though everything is definitely happening. Um, and right now, you know, things do look positive, not necessarily in our country, but in terms of everything continuing, it does look pretty positive for us to go out and race. Um, and that's, that's what you need to focus on, you know, focus on the controllables and what happens, happens, you know, you, those things are out of your control. So, Peter, as we focus on the controllables, as you say, we've got two months to go before uh, Tokyo. Um, what happens now? What exactly are you planning um, ahead of that? Yeah, so, you know, right now, you know, everybody mentions, yeah, but, uh, you know, now you're waiting for the team announcement. You know, for me, um, the slots have been created and the performance I, performances I had now at World Champs, you know, I really feel it, uh, it, it's more mere formality in terms of the team announcement. So really now it's all about focusing on your training um, and focusing on 
listening to your body and make sure that you get to Tokyo as healthy as you can be. I mean, especially with the pandemic in our country now creating havoc. Um, so, you know, it's all about being responsible, um, being healthy and focusing on doing your training at, to the best of your abilities, you know. So, and yeah, you know, again, just, you know, it's incredible the support I've had, um, even, you know, from uh, the National Lotteries Commission um, and, and the Sports Trust, um, they've actually made it possible for me to sort of take a little bit of an unpaid leave, four months stint um, from my work at Deloitte. So all of those things helps um, that you can sort of have some extra sleep when your son has a night of good night and all those kind of things, um, you know, so that you can be as healthy as you can be and completely just focus on your training and preparation for Tokyo. So I'm very grateful for that.